Okay, you're very welcome to this event tonight. Uh, my name is Robert Beggs. I'll be the chairperson this evening. I've been involved with agroenvironment schemes uh, for a number of years, um, and I'm currently a, a biodiversity technologist at CAFRI, where our team has a role in providing agroenvironment training. This is a short event tonight. Um, it's based on video footage that was taken in the orchard at Lockery College in Cookstown just before Christmas. And during the video, you will see a uh, Caffrey horticulturalist, Kieran Lavelle, demonstrating some pruning techniques and discussing uh, soil fertility and general tree health. Kieran and Jerry McGurr have kindly joined us tonight to answer any questions that you may have after the event. Um, Jerry has, has many years of experience of, of scheme work, particularly with agri-environment. So right from the off, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to attend tonight. Um, small orchards have historically been a feature of, of many of our farms across all of Northern Ireland, providing fruit uh, for sale or for use in the home. Now, successive agro-environment schemes down through the years have recognised the importance of small orchards and have encouraged farmers to plant new orchards or um, add new trees to existing orchards. Uh, these areas help conserve uh, our heritage varieties of trees and have the added benefits uh, to our pollinating insects. Just one small technical issue before we start. Um, when the video starts in a moment, You'll notice three buttons or icons just down in the bottom right corner, just below the video. So those control your volume and the size of your screen. So just whenever we start, just take a moment just to ensure that your volume is up uh, to the maximum and that your screen size is maximized as well. OK, so I will play the video. You're all very welcome to a pruning demonstration on a, for a traditional orchards, basically aimed at, targeted at people with orchards planted on the environmental farming scheme. We're here this morning on the shortest day of the year in Lockery campus, which is a, a, one of a, the three campuses on, a, belonging to CAFRI, which is the College of Agriculture and Food Rural Enterprise. We're just outside Cookstown and I hope you've learned a, some tips on pruning apple trees. Pruning apple trees is an art, it's hard to explain. No two people will prune an apple tree the same way, but I'm going to go through the, the objectives of pruning, uh, pruning an apple tree uh, on this short presentation. The reason why we prune apple trees is obviously to uh, control their shape, to improve uh, fruit quality, uh, to reduce uh, disease pressure, and for ease of management in regards to uh, picking the fruit and also increasing the size of the fruit. So for the fruit size is so important when we're growing apples. Uh, normally, generally speaking, five, mil, five apples at 65 mil diameter is a pound weight of fruit. Three apples at uh, 70 mil apple, 70 mil in size is another pound weight of fruit. And two apples at 80 mil size is a pound weight of fruit. So which you better uh, grow, picking, uh, trying to grow, and uh, be it for cooking or for eating. So it's all about getting uh, quality fruit. So we want to keep the uh, pruning simple and uh, that people can go through their orchard and uh, know what, have confidence in what to do. If you're worried about pruning, don't worry, it's all about confidence. If you prune an apple tree, it should always grow again. So there's no such thing as a right or a wrong. Um, starting off with the basic principles, apple trees are not factory made. They come in all different shapes and sizes. They can vary from a feathered maiden, from a, well, the basic one is a whip that comes up basically like what I have here in my hand. This is just a, a, a water shot or a, a growth that I've, that I've taken out of, of an orchard yesterday. But this is a, uh, like uh, I'd call this, uh, you can imagine if there was a rootstock on this, this would be a feathered uh, a whip with no no branch, no no branches on it, and then it can vary to an, the next standard up, which is a one-year-old feathered whip, or you can get a two-year-old tree. But for those people, when you buy your trees, and if it's like a like a like a whip, uh, my advice to you to get encor to encourage uh, uh, breaks and branches on it. We call them dards and brindles. Is where you get your fruit bud. Is to uh, is to head your tree back. So, and for the traditional orchards under the environmental farming scheme, the tree density is uh, greatly reduced compared to the commercial orchards. So we're trying to fill our space 
and we're trying to uh, uh, get as much uh, fruit tree wall within the within the giving area. So there's two ways of growing the, the fruit trees. They can either be centre leader or open centre. So for centre leader, it's like an A shape or a Christmas tree is what we're looking for. Uh, at, at, attractive to the eye and you follow it, f follow it down. So for centre leader tree, you normally, if you do get a whip, uh, you cut your tree roughly back to, it's roughly, uh, it's 26 inches uh, imperial for metric, it's a little under me a metre, so you just cut back, it's roughly about uh, waist height, you just head the, tree, head the tree back and you have you have your you, you cut to, a, to an outward facing board with a, with a slight angle and my advice is actually to rub out the second and third bud uh, when you're doing this because what actually happens is a thing called apical dominance you get two or three uh, main branches coming out and all the power goes to the top so you just nick, nick, nick out the buds two and three like that there so as to give more power up to the to the centre leader that's if you're growing them centre leader for open centre you cut back harder you go to 33 inches and you don't cut back the uh, you don't cut back the buds because you want them to push out and fill the space as quickly as quick quickly as possible. So that's it on a that's it on a one year old tree or a two year old tree. Probably on the for the environmental farming scheme we're probably lower density said and we're all growing them open centre. So cut back to 33 inches and get them to um, uh, push out to to encourage uh, breaks. So we've moved on from the young tree now and we've gone into a slightly older tree here probably seven eight years of age what we're trying to do here is to uh, you can imagine this tree in full leaf and fruit next august and it's a bit like a board's nest there's far too much cluttering there's no light getting in there's too much shading uh, there's uh, low branches uh, you'll always get a high branch down but you'll never get a low branch up so you can imagine this next july august if there's a full of leaf and full of fruit, the, the branches will be on the ground. So in, in, in the game we talk about lift, lifting the skirt. So we need to ground and lift the low branches up and we need to thin it out a bit. You'll find also, for those people that know the orientation of their orchards, uh, north-south branches have less shading than east-west branches, is the way the sun travels around. So we want to get as much light interception as possible in the orchard, into the tree, for a fruit size, fruit quality, and skin finish. So I'm just going to give an, an example here of uh, lifting, thinning it out, and hopefully you'll see as you go along uh, what actually I'm, 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 I'm trying to achieve. So I'll cut out the obvious ones. First of all, we have like a, if I could just pass a comment on this out, uh, 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 when you're at, uh, pruning your trees always check the rabbit guards but the rabbit guard here wants to be uh, loosened it's uh, uh, it's too tight it's too tight around the tree uh, so just loosen it a bit let a bit of air let a bit of air around your tree for the more we have like a competitor here for a, a centre leader um, so I, I would remove this branch here And I'm just going to go along. Instead of taking out the whole branch, instead of taking out the whole branch, I'm just going to go back and take it by reduce it by half to see how 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 we're going. That branch is also far too low. So when you cut it out, it's it, it's gone. So try and uh, take take half back. So it's like a haircut, we're pruning, pruning the tree back because we want these branches to stiffen up and yet all we want to encourage them to go out to fill their space but we want them to stiffen up so that when they do go out they're fit to carry, um, fit to carry the fruit without hit, hitting the ground. So it's just a matter of going around, short, shortening them back because they're slightly low and if it's overcrowded, reduce, the, reduce thin them out. Not particularly happy with that. 
branch there, the tree started too low, so that branch should also be uh, completely removed. It's too low. Pruning can be done any time from the leaf come off until the, the first of first of April. And actually you can do a wee bit of summer pruning if you if 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 need be. So this branch is crossing over on top of this one. Back there. So we're trying to cut out any disease. You make notes in your orchards. Yeah. We have some uh, apple canker, uh, Nectaria galagina, uh, next wet damp conditions. So you can see there, you definitely cut out your, your apple canker. And some trees that are badly infected with it, you can't cut it all out or else you'd have nothing left bar a stump. But try and remove as much of it as possible. So, going back into the centre, so it's trying to let the light in, cut out the big branches. And we're not too bad at that. Uh, not too bad. You notice here, always try and cut to a branch. Never leave a coat hanger. And what I mean by a coat hanger is literally don't cut into open, open space because you basically in, you want like it coming up from your main stem flowing up in equal portions. So it's like a, a four inch pipe go to a three inch pipe to a two inch out to a, to a one inch. So it's all about e e equal flow and always cut, cut, to, cut to something. So this branch here is coming back across. This is going to cause crowding and shading. I just thin it out a wee bit here. It's just a bit too much here. So I'd be happy with that. You can you can see there's a fair amount of stuff laying on the ground, a bit low here. So this is our fruit bud, quite a good example. This is our fruit bud on our two-year-old timber. This is going to give us apples next year. Yeah, the vegetative bud on the one-year-old timber. So the more you cut back, you're encouraging vegetative growth rather than encouraging the tree to fruit to produce fruit. So it's all about getting the balance. So that's why when I started pruning is an art so it, it, it takes experience but don't be afraid to don't be afraid to cut but be careful don't cut too much because if you cut too much you'll put the tree into vegetative growth and you'll reduce your uh, uh, crop load so again always cut back to something so we're not too bad there so I hope you can see the difference between it wasn't a bad tree to start with so I hope you can see the difference between the from, from what I started to what I finished. Well, I've moved across the orchard now, and I, I pick. Uh, I've picked a couple of uh, examples where, if you're standing on the orchard on your own and you don't know what to do, and you've come across a poor specimen of a tree, you know you're faced with this situation. Uh, so what do you do? Do you have to make a choice? The first comment I would pass about this tree, the bark on it is quite red, so I would imagine. I would know that the tree is short of nitrogen. So to encourage a bit of vigor and uh, vitality into the tree, I would be putting like a uh, uh, rotten farmyard manure around the tree or a uh, spent mushroom compost that has been composted ar ar around the tree. Uh, or if you want to put on some fertilizer or from a garden center or from a, 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 a trade product, that, that's also fair enough, but the, the, the timber is very red on it, so it would be slightly starved of nitrogen. The other comment I would make, and it's very uh, typical for, uh, especially for some orchards that I've seen on the environmental farming scheme, is the is the tree guard, and it's quite tight here. So don't be afraid to loosen it, and you can see like uh, there's for make sure make sure make sure you loosen it that it's not not choking the tree. But you're here and you're faced with this tree here, what do you do? Do you walk away or do you leave it to try and get a bit of shape into it? 
and if you remember from the start of my video this tree was probably headed back here 36 inches the number two bud wasn't rubbed out and this is our number two two branch here so in this particular case what i would be inclined to do and this is very interesting um this is very interesting um i'm going to cut out the number two bud so mark if i could have the secretary i have the secretaries here and i want the handsaw so what would, what's very interesting to do here, to put this tree into balance and to try and get a bit of, bit of life back into it, I'm going to cut out the second branch, but I'm using a Dutch cut. So instead of cutting parallel to the main stem, I'm going to cut parallel to the ground because there's buds in here and they'll break and we should get two to three, two to three breaks from here. So happy with that and um, you have your uh, brakes, brakes coming from there. Um, I would also head them back, I'm not going to go back as hard but head them back to try and get some growth into them. And another wee tip for to encourage uh, bare timber or the buds to break is to run your a, a blade of a handsaw just above the bud any time from January to February to encourage breaks. I'm not saying every one of them is going to break but if you've got 60% of them to break to throw out a branch you would have more than a sufficient uh, branch number. So it's literally it's just a quick run off the saw above the bud like that there. So we're trying to form a, 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 a branch network on the tree. So, and that's all we can do, that's all we can do with, with that tree. Okay, so we've moved on from a tree that was performing very uh, poorly to a tree that's grown excessively. And again, you'd be faced, this is the reality, you'd be faced with this situation in, a, in, in your orchard or in your traditional orchard under, under the, the environmental farm scheme. And you can see even, even the tree behind me is the same more or less it's this tree so we can see the fruit bud here uh our fruit bud here 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 but where's this tree going or what it's going to be like in 10 years time we want to get a proper framework structure of a tree that's going to be easy picked have a, a quantity of apples on it of good quality and uh, to fill a space this tree is only going up in the air it's not going out to fill fill, fill the space and it's quite interesting to look at this tree it, in my opinion this tree would have been cut back here uh, uh, probably two year two three years ago because uh, you can see as i talked about earlier apical dominance you have four breaks up there and you've you've so much so much bare timber but every every tree is different and i'm going to show you another technique now uh, that i would uh, recommend uh, what you should do when you're faced with this this scenario so i'm just going to we can tie we cut, the best time is actually to manipulate the branches to get them into the into the place where we want them to go. So I would encourage tying down, or you can like uh, even fill a two-liter milk carton and to, to hang it from the branch and put get your branch into place. But the best thing, and it happens in commercial orchards, is that we tie it down with string fixed onto a W clip into the ground. And you tie it there and the best time for that is when the sap is in the tree and it, it would be normally from the, the middle of july to the to the middle of august so if mark if you just come over and just pull down those two branches and two branches there we're going to get it down but i'm also going to do some pruning also <coughs> to try and encourage our tree to uh, to get more branches on our tree with a view to tying down next august so I'm going to reduce the height of our tree anyway because apples up there is no good to anybody. So and in this scenario 
try and cut the two sideward buds instead of an upper face bud to cut the two sideward, side, sideward buds because one's going that way and one's going out that way so that we get them to fill their, fill their space. Might go to there. And this, I'm not happy with this tall chop in the middle at all. So if the tree's totally out of balance, so I'm going to remove this chop here, cut to this by here. So if I just ask you to come back, Mark, so you can imagine next August, we're just going to pull that, tie that down and try and get a bit more framework into our tree. So I'm looking at this tree here and it's a mature tree. Um, and again, you're, I always picture a grower or a farmer standing in the orchard alone and they're faced with pruning this tree, what to do. So what I would do was I would walk around my tree, see what is, what material, the obvious cuts would come out first, the dead branches, the big branches, my approach would be to take out two or three of the big branches that are causing the most problems and then review the situation. So, and even in a big tree, you don't have to take out the two or three main branches that are obvious in year one. You can do it over a two year period. But I've identified two branches here that I would like to remove. So it's this branch here. And this branch here because of crossing and causing shade. So I'm going to remove those two branches first of all. And interestingly to, to note here, this is very interesting, a branch coming out on top of a branch will always grow to the sky. We would not have that in a commercial orchard situation. They should always be coming out at an angle, flowing out. So a branch on the top of a branch will always tend to grow upwards. Technically speaking, that should be out there, but we don't want to do that here because we'd leave too big of a hole, too big of a gap in the tree. So I'm going to do a half measure first of all. I'm going to take, take the two obvious cuts out first of all. branch is coming out because it's uh, causing a lot of shading on the lower tier and also it's too high for to, to harvest the fruit. So Mark if I could just ask you to come forward and just pull that branch to you because the way it was laying on the soil. Now, And already you can see that has made a big difference to our tree. There's still a lot of fine stuff in it that will produce fruit. There's some dead timber in the tree which I'm not happy about. I'd be inclined also to remove this branch now because he's going to think next August he's going to be causing shading in the main part of your tree, in the middle, in the heart of your tree. Over the lopers. 
So I'm just going to ground now. We've done our two, three major cuts, and I'm just going to go around now, cut out some dead timber, and pin it out a wee bit, and just give it a general tidy up. Okay, folks, we are here now at the the jewel in the orchard. This is, would be very representative of uh, a tree, probably 50 years plus. Um, so you can imagine the height of the tree, what are we trying to achieve by pruning, what are we trying to achieve by having the fruit tree in the first place, I, I, you know it's useful for biodiversity and wildlife and having fruit is, is, is a bonus, but fruit up there is, is, is no good to the, to the, to the farmer. So what, what I, ha I have walked around my tree, I've selected four or five major cuts which I would like to do first of all to see how we're going to try and get our tree down. In a situation like this you don't have to necessarily take the four or five major cuts out in one year, you can do it over a two year period, but in this particular case I'm happy enough to do it on today. I'd also recommend from a health and safety point of view that uh, we don't, uh, I wouldn't encourage ladders, try and get a long handled pole saw uh, to cut the trees chainsaw is quite dangerous and also sawdust can be quite dangerous if the wind is blowing and the sawdust gets into your eyes so always wear the correct uh, protective gear including goggles uh, earmuffs if using uh, if using uh, m m m m specialized equipment for pruning but with the long handled saw uh, from the ground uh, health and safety is not uh, is, is, is of lesser concern so I'm going to go ahead now this there's a lot of timber in this tree. I'm going to go ahead and take out my four or five major cuts and then we'll reassess the tree. So, first major cut. This is the second cut we're doing on the tree to get the tree height, tree height down. We didn't start with a perfect tree. We're not going to finish with a perfect tree, but it'll be near perfect. So I'm doing my third major cut to the tree and trying to open up the center of the tree to let better light in and also to get the tree height down to encourage the tree to become fuller at the bottom but to encourage better size of apples and get better fruit bud on the younger timber so this I've decided to take the third major cut out of this tree here so I, I, again I'm just cutting it at the top but I'm also giving it a little nick across the bottom to stop the bark tearing when the branch does decide to go. So we careful from pulling the branch out. So very happy with that cut, very happy with that cut, it opened the whole tree up. So now we're on to our fourth major cut on this tree. It's an old tree, as I said earlier, it's not a perfect tree or perfect specimen, but we will do our best with it and put it into as good a shape as we can. So we're on to our fourth major cut. So we've only done three cuts already, this is our fourth cut.
not particularly clean, but just tidy it up. That's our fourth cut and we're going to do one, one or two more and we're going to leave the, we'll, we'll just do a bit more finer cutting after that. Okay so when we are here I'm going to reduce the height, I'm going to take out the back but to hit the one behind, get it down. I'm just going around to pull it out. So now that's five major, five major cuts carried out on the three. I see two or three smaller ones that I would like to do, which I'm now going to do. And they're not as not as big a cut. Going back in, it's still too high. Some people might say I'm buttering the tree, but unfortunately, the tree has got out of hand. Again, just taking off some of the higher branches. So I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I know I start, I didn't start out with a perfect tree, I'm not going to finish with a perfect tree, but over the next two, three years, I'd like to see some new growth coming into it and filling, filling the space. Next year, I'd probably be removing these two branches. as you can see the tree's not in good shape health wise but I'm just tidying it up to try and get it into a bit of vigour yeah so in this particular case I might just pick the out all together So as the tree opened up and hopefully we'll get new timber coming in to fill 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 this space. And next year we definitely will be taking out those two trees, two branches. So you can see folks the amount of timber that I've taken out of the tree. Fairly hard prune, but could have been done over two years. But one year, got the tree down, opened up. I know there's some more dead timber in the tree, but I think we've taken more than enough out of it. So, uh, quite pleased, and you'll be fit to see from the drone footage before and after pruning. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you get some benefit out of it. If you'd like further information, so click on the information button below where, I, where there will be a technical bulletin uploaded with more general information on pruning the aims and objectives and for the different varieties. 
basically be tip bearing, spore bearing on one or two year old timber. But have confidence in, in, in pruning. Uh, so if in doubt, cut the, you'll never get a low branch up, cut the low branches out, do your major cuts, walk around your tree and do it over a phase period of a number of years. Don't go totally uh, mad in year one. Thank you. Okay, um, hopefully everybody found that um, <clears throat> informative. I know I certainly did. Uh, if there is any questions, um, by all means, um, if you want to access the Q&A button down in the bottom corner, um, please do. I know we have a few questions um, already in, so we'll just go straight and make a start on those. So let's let me get the first one. So, uh, Kieran, this one uh, probably falls to you. So, um, I would appreciate some advice um, on training fruit trees in the traditional open center style. At what height would you advise to cut the center leader uh, slash growing tip? So, uh, yeah. I mean, you probably covered that at the start, but if you want to just go yeah. over it again. And um, I covered that at the start. So, if you're growing open center trees, on vigorous rootstock on rootstock 10 mm 106, I would recommend the standard recommendation was to cut the center leader back to 23 inches, and all you need is four to six branches maximum coming out below that to grow uh, an open center tree. And really and truly, for the open center tree to keep filling its space. When those four or six branches put up one year growth, snip it back, keep snipping back because that encourages vegetative growth and keep snipping back to a sideward, to, to two sideward buds so you get two branches, one goes to two, two goes to four and so on and multiplies out, multiplies up. So keep snipping to, to fill a space. Traditional orchards, the tree density is low. Traditionally, orchards in the commercial orchards in County Armagh they were planted for the next generation. Now we don't snip as much. We're planting trees a lot closer, a lot higher density, and we have to uh, be in apple production a, a lot sooner than waiting for the fruit the fruit trees to bear for the next generation. If if that, that answers the that answers the question. Yeah, that, that's perfect. And just Robert, when I was there at, at the start of the video, in case somebody starts weighing apples. I made an error. It's five apples at 65 mil diameter is a pound weight of fruit, approximately. It's three apples at 80 mil diameter is a pound weight of fruit, again, approximately. And two apples at 90 mil is a pound weight of fruit. Okay. And if you can increase your average fruit size from 70 mil to 75 mil in diameter, you'll increase your yield by a third, which is hard to believe. But that is the reality. It's all about fruit size for bulk and volume. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jerry, uh, one for you. Um, will there be any options on future schemes to reseed the orchard as a wildflower meadow uh, with a view to keeping bees in the orchard in the future? Any any plans on that one? Uh, right, Robert. Um, we don't know what will be in the future, but at the moment, um, it is, I suppose, the, the option description is traditional orchard, and the main aim of it is uh, conservation of the genetic resource of traditional fruit. Um, I suppose traditionally orchards were um, maybe close to a farmyard, close to the farmhouse. There may have been a few livestock kept it, maybe a few rams. The chickens would have probably have roamed around it, and it had a grass canopy. And I would expect that's probably what would be in the future. Just notice there, and that um, I'm sure others would observe it as well. In the orchard at Lochry, there was well, there were beehives. Um, I suppose maybe not so much in the orchard, but um, maybe in neighbouring um, adjacent fields or whatever, there could be some kind of a pollinator margin or wildflower, or whatever. Um, I know at the moment. Um, the traditional orchard is an option and the wildflower um, margins are an option as well. So that would basically be dual funding within the one a combined option. So that's not feasible at the moment, but it's probably someone looked at the funeral in the future. Um, maybe Kieran would have more observations on that about seasons of pollination and um, 
apple blossom and and wildflowers as well. I, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, well, you can have uh, you can have strips around your orchard. You can have you have the solitary bees and you have the bumblebees and you have the honeybees and you know we we're, we're all for uh, pollinating insects, but the biggest thing for a crop of apples is uh, with the help of the pollination insects is um, to have a warm night following a warm day and where you get a good warm night with temperatures average temperature over 10 degrees at full bloom you definitely it's a big advantage for setting a crop of apples at full bloom okay very interesting um, just moving on to the uh, next one, um, and again, you can excuse me, Kieran, if, if this is the same thing. Do tip-bearing trees require a different technique? A good question, an interesting question. Slightly different, not as much, uh, especially for what you, what the uh, EFS is trying to achieve, get the trees at lower density, fill their space. They don't, tip-bearing trees don't need as much snipping but they do need a, a, a reduced uh, haircut to um, because some of the varieties that, that are tip bearing would maybe you've produced too many small apples on the tips of the branches so don't be afraid to cut them back uh, uh, you know uh, uh, cut them back a third if they're uh, don't be cutting out all your fruit bud but thin them out a wee bit and just give them a, a, a reduced haircut for the want of a better word, if you understand me. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, I have a question here, uh, it's with two parts. The first part, um, what's the best spray to use for weed and grass control around the trees? Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting one. That's a very interesting one. Um, the main product used would be uh, probably uh, like phosphate, would be would be roundup um uh and interestingly there will be less uh there'll be less herbicide used and growers are reducing their herbicide strip in commercial orchards because uh, they want to uh, they want to hold on to their soil structure and their their the their ecosystem within the soil uh, i i i heard during the week roundup last year was something like 80 pound on average for 20 litres this year if you can get it this is this is it could be roughly 240 pound for 20 litres so in the commercial orchards there'll be less weed killer using the strips will be narrower but depending on the timing of it if you can even mow down the buttercups and the flowers over a uh, blossom time so the pollinating insects stay in the orchard uh, stay in the flowers of the fruit tree so it would be a big advantage and then you know if you can uh, one spray one herbicide maybe around the, the trunk of the tree uh, you know in in june would get you through to the following year it all depends on the season on growth conditions and that but it's very hard to give a prescriptive list it, 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 it varies so much but roundup would probably be the backbone of the of the for the weed and grass control okay thank you um just one more question um and i know you covered this actually during the um the video but i don't think it actually uh, made the final video uh what's good to discourage moss growth um on branches and i look at i've looked at a few traditional orchards but i've looked at a lot of commercial orchards even this week and i'm amazed how green they are how green they are they are so green it's unbelievable but um long ago 20 years ago we used to have a product called tar oil and it was fantastic it cleaned them as clean as this floor you know tar oil what do you do all i can recommend there's nothing really that you can put on there are some agronomists saying that you can put on hyperchloride to uh take the moss off, take the greenness off trees. You can get hyperchlorate at different concentrations, 4%, 11%. But my advice would be, if you are trying that, try, now is the time to be actually doing it, but try it on um, 
try it on a, a small area first to see how you get on or else go to a, a good garden center and see have they got it wouldn't be as strong or as pure as the tar oil that you used to get years ago but they may have something equivalent but apart from that there's nothing else the important thing is to open up your tree and let the air through it and let the drying through it and that will reduce it somewhat but if you have a lot of moss and lichen growing on your trees or even trees generally your trees under a bit of stress it could be wet feet uh, not getting the right drain too much shade too much crowding lichens moss all that stuff growing the tree is not uh, it's not ideal but it's a difficult question to get your it's a difficult one to answer it definitely is um i would imagine i'm obviously no expert but uh moss and lichens on a tree um they probably don't do it much damage would would they do it much harm they don't do it much harm but the next thing then you know and that last tree that i butchered for the want of a stronger word there was a lot of dead timber on that tree and there was a lot of lichens and a lot of moss it's a it's a sign it's, it's a sign of not a healthy tree to be honest with you so you know you, you, you I'd, I'd rather you don't want to see them you know you, I, you your, your tree's not thriving it's not healthy yeah i think from an efs point of view you're you're obviously trying to um stay away from um the chemicals and things so uh oh. pruning pruning and open up your trees probably yes. your probably your first your first course of action there and might be the the best yes. yeah yeah okay thank you um let me see what we have down here so um again this is a, another one for you karen you mentioned rubbing out uh the buds um can you talk a bit more about that yeah that's qu quite easy um so when you're heading your back your tree set to 33 inches you cut cut it at a slight angle slightly above the bud don't cut tight to the bud in case you get a bit of day back and then that bud will die so leave it about what three three mil above the bud then i rub out the number two and number three bud so that stops apical dominance if you remember the tree in the video where there was three coming out where it was headed back it's to, it's to put the power on a head up and give the the, the branch to give the breaks that hopefully will come from the buds below um about the chance of of being forced out so if you don't grow about number two and number three bud you know they're all going to the to the top all the powers going to the top it's like a chimney so your two and three branches number two and number three branches are um are uh they've more or less the same power as your center leader or has your main stem so you don't want that and even i can see trees no later than last week i was looking at trees in commercial orchards where they didn't rub out the number two bud and the tree's totally lopsided so it is it's not it it's all about balance and being pleasing to the eye and having confidence to do it you know long ago people were afraid to cut out the number two branch rub out the number two bud first of all and even if they didn't rub it out to cut out the branch it's all about balance uh you know and even pleasing today that the tree looks in balance okay so it's yeah. a simple enough process it's just a matter of nicking them out or even if you're if you wanted to wait until bud burst or until the trees after a, about a month after bud burst you can just go along and actually physically rub them out with your uh, with your fingers rub out the number two and number three bud just just rub them out pull them out um something that's just um just moves on from that slightly you had mentioned um cut back to something so um could you just give a wee bit more on that yeah again it's all about balance and i said in the video it's a bit like plumbing a house you know you want a four inch pipe you don't want a four inch pipe going into a one inch pipe you want a four inch pipe going into a three inch down to a two inch or one inch you know in in that's in simple terms so it's all about flow of the of the the the, the network and you don't cut back to, well you cut back you can actually when you cut back hard you put your tree into vegetative growth so you i always try and cut to a sideward branch or uh you know a branch uh, that will take me that will reduce me down from a you know to from a three inch to a two inch or whatever uh you'll try and um you, tr you try and have the thing in balance or have a tapering out and don't cut back don't cut back saying to a you can cut back a weakish branch all right but don't cut back to a two or three inch branch into a stump you know into a like a two or two two or three foot 
length stump. I call those coat hangers, and I don't like to see coat hangers in orchards because all that is going to do is produce vegetative growth. So it is. So it's all about it's 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 all about balance. Okay, thank you. Um, just one more. Um, is it necessary to fertilize apple trees? Um, and if so, how much? Yeah, that's a very good question, and I, I'm I'm not familiar enough with the environmental farming scheme, but definitely like those trees that the, the trees that were pruned at Lockall or at um, Lockery, I could see the redness in the timber, um, and uh, they definitely I'd be putting on a good barrel full of farmyard manure to the to well, say you take a three two or three year old and you have the rabbit yard around them or the wooden stakes and all that there, but you know they could do they could definitely take a half barrel full of rotten farmyard manure or uh, some spent mushroom compass or organic material around the tree. Don't put it tight up against the tree. Keep it out three to six inches. You're basically trying to put it underneath the tree canopy. Uh, irrespective of the age, even if it's a ten year old, twelve, fifteen, twenty year old tree, put it put it underneath the 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 tree canopy. Even put a link box of it on. Um, and the way you know your tree is healthy is in simple terms, is by the length of time that they hold their leaves at the back end in the months of October, November. So if they lose, I know different varieties differ, but if you if they lose their leaves early, they're under a bit of stress. But this year in particular, and it was a mild with a mild back end, uh, I never seen the leaves staying on as long in orchards. The leaves stayed on into well into December. So and you can. The, the, the timing of it, you know, I'd be putting that on in uh, in in springtime, and then if you had a crop of apples, you could give them a bit of straight, uh, if some a compound fertilizer like twenty ten ten or twenty four six twelve something with a bit of balance in it. Your potash gives you the set. This is in very simple terms. Your potash gives you the size. That's your K. Your potash gives it the size. Your phosphate gives it the whiteness. For the want of a, in in simple terms, and your nitrogen gives you the the, the greenness of, uh, and also the size and also the extension timber. But if your trees are showing red, a reddish tinge to them, and the bark's red, they're definitely definitely hungry. So again, uh, I, I I would prefer you know a bit of organic matter, uh, and maybe top it up with a bit of uh, compound fertilizer. But you can also go with compound fertilizer even in commercial orchards. They may not. A lot of men are soil testing now with the price of fertilizer, but they may they may wait to after blossom to see what the fruit sets like, to see did they escape the spring air frost before they complement, before they think of fertilizing. It's a bad job to put on fertilizer too early before flowering because the tree's full of sap, and if the frost does come, it will hit it hard. The harder your tree is, the better its ability to withstand an air frost okay okay thank you um I have one here uh, an interesting one um so uh trees that were planted three years ago as whips but have never been cut back to the the 33 or the 36 inches so they look similar to the smallest one you pruned um with two or three branches growing straight up any advice do i still trim back to 36 inches now If that tree is lopsided, or those trees, if those two branches, for argument's sake, are more than half the diameter of the centre leader, I would be reducing them with a Dutch cut. That's where you hold your secateurs or your saw parallel to the ground. So you cut it off. You can imagine. You can imagine. Um, that's your. That's your stem. That's that's that, that's your stem. And and here's your branch. So you cut it off parallel. So you it's your your bit of your of your stumps coming straight out, rather than cutting it flush with the stem. Cut it at parallel to the ground. So there's wee vegetative buds in there, and they will throw out three to four shots. That's if your tree is lopsided. You have two or three big strong branches that are more than half the diameter of the main stem. Cut them out with a Dutch cut. If they're not more than half the diameter, try and tie them down at the, at the end of July. If you tie them down too early, what will happen is where you tie them down, they'll actually just torn and go straight back up. 
So tie tie them down and maybe depending on the three, you could start again, but I wouldn't like to start again. You could also you can also reduce back your 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 your, your you can also reduce back your branches by cutting to two sideward buds. Okay, thank you. Uh, one for you, actually, Jerry. Um, this person has noticed that uh, field records must be kept um, just in relation to their orchard. So maybe just a little bit more information on what information or what details they need to keep in their records. Yeah. Fine. Thanks, Robert. No, um, it's a requirement of um, all the options, actually, to keep the field records. Um, they're useful for audit or even at inspection um, when a few years down the line when someone wants to know what has happened. Um, things that you'd be requiring there would be establishment, when they were established, when the orchard was planted, what maintenance was done to it. And there's um, also um, part of that, that would um, involve plant health and anything that was done there. You could then um, record your pruning and any field or orchard operations that would take place. Okay, thank you. So Again, if you needed to, as Kieran said earlier, and later stages, if you needed a bit of fertilizer, you would record such things as that. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Uh, Kieran, back to you. Um, uh, there is someone here um, that is keen on um, allowing grazing underneath and they're thinking of pruning the leader higher, maybe um, five foot and going out from there. Any thoughts? Yeah, that's okay. You can, <laughs> yes, that's that's not a problem. It, 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 you have a right strong tree to be starting with when you've, uh, if you're going to start pruning at, at a five, your tree's well established uh, with your, when your leader, you see, when your leader, if you're only if you're pruning back your leader to five feet, out that person, it they seem to be growing the tree as a centre leader. You can grow them as as an open centre tree, and when you're planting your tree, you can get high walk trees and low walk trees, and you probably have to take the trees that you can that's only available from a limited number of sources, especially for the older varieties. But you can let the tree up, surely, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, who's our next one here? So um, getting a bit more technical, how do we graft an old, much loved apple tree growth onto an existing tree we have in our garden? That's yeah, right. Maybe for a different time. No, 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 no. That is a very good question. That is a very good question. Right. The first thing you need to do is to take the graft wood off the tree that you want to preserve. So you take one year old wood and hopefully you can get it off the tree, one year old wood. You bury it in sand in a pile of sand on a north facing wall. And that should have been really done in December, January. Might be getting a wee bit late now, but you could still try it. The, so you have your boat, you have your graph wood and the graph wood can be anything from the graph wood. Like, you know, in some of the varieties could be up to three foot long. So you just cut them and cover them in sand. So you take the graph wood, then in, you let it stay there. At blossom time, at blossom time, you take the, 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 the graft from the sand and you only need four to six buds on the graft. So you only need, you don't, your graft would only be the length of a pencil. You know, you cut your, your, your one year old timber that you've taken from the variety, see it be whatever the variety is, Beauty of Bath or whatever. You and all you need is four to six buds, cut it with your secateurs, and you do like a you can do like a, a bench, a, a whip and tongue graft. You know, you slit, slit down, slit and then fit it in like that and tape it around, or you can put wax on it. Or see, uh, it should take if it's all done correctly. You need the cambium layers meeting and knitting. And you keep the budding tape on it for approximately six weeks to two months. It can be hit and miss, and it is a skilled job. Okay, thank you. Interesting. Um, just a, a quick question. Uh, we have access to seaweed. Um, any issues with applying that as a fertilizer? Absolutely none. none Fantastic whatsoever. product. Yeah, okay, good. Um, it's just a comment here. Is mulching a good alternative to spraying? And um, it 
is um if is there any issues with uh, mulching and putting it around the tree mulching it Mulch. depends what you're mulching with if you're mulching with wood bark it it can pull nitrogen from the tree and leave the tree hungry so my advice would be put your your feed underneath your mulch your feed be it whatever be it uh, inorganic material or organic material put it underneath your mulch and put your mulch over it then but uh, mulching is not it's not it's not a bad idea at all okay thank you uh we are planning to put some pear trees against the south south facing wall um any any tips on that or any problems no no problem and no problem at all uh pears are pears bloom a lot earlier than uh apple trees traditionally and the, the uh, there's no problem no no problem and you'll probably just tie them in give them good support and t t tie them in uh tie them with wire al along the wall no problem no okay just um on the subject of pears um there's there's someone here has um included pears in their efs orchard uh can pear trees be shaped in the open center array similar to that so yes for apples that's fine yes you can grow pears any number of ways you can take pears up center leader you can take them up double center leader you can take them up four center leaders but you need structures to support them but a cent one center leader would be more than sufficient in an open field situation okay um just on the storage of fruit uh for a, a small producer um what is the best temperature to store fruit at um what's the best way other than a fridge to store fruit for long periods it depends what you mean by long periods uh, but if you're going for um i would say a short-term storage up to christmas keep them in the dark and keep them in a cool place and just keep them in We'd call them apple boxes, like they're either a thirty pound or a forty eight pound apple box. Uh, you know, I know people. One person that keeps keeps them in a in, a, in an old cattle trailer uh, and covers them and store the store quite well. So they do. Okay. Um, getting to the end here. Um, just to clarify, do we wait until the trees are flowering before we add organic manure to feed them? No, no. I I I would probably give it slightly beforehand because it would okay. be more slower acting than the, than the compound fertilizer. Okay. Um, Do you have any uh, plum trees under the scheme, uh, Robert? Um, Jerry can correct me, but I think plum trees are included, um, are included in the traditional orchards. Yeah, aren't they? yeah. plums, damsons, um, pear, apple, yeah, and, and anything of a tra anything a traditional variety of, of yeah, but interestingly, plums are nearly self pruning because any of you would that have would have a mature plum tree, you would notice in certain years either with the weight of fruit or, or branches easy brittle, they break themselves. I'm not saying you have to give them a hand, but you know plums do sort of half prune themselves by breaking the branches. So don't be afraid to. Um, don't be afraid to cut your your plum because plums are they can be vigorous, so they can. Okay, um, Jerry, just a, a quick question for you: um, How many different varieties of trees um, would an EFS orchard typically include? So, what's your what's your minimum number of of varieties there that you need to have? Oh, a variety of is, for example, an apple tree, or yeah. a variety of each. I think I think just a variety of an of an apple tree. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's any um, specific numbers, but there is um, usually around maybe three or so. Um, under the information sheets, all that information's <clears throat> available, Robert. So um, on, it depends on probably the size of the orchard. The smallest one that's funded on the EFS is um, 0 0.05 of a hectare or then up to um, put it whatever your scheme agreement is. So obviously the larger the uh, orchard would be, the more varieties we would expect to have in it. Yeah. As and as I just want to say again, like we, you can have apple, you can have, you know, um, cooking apples, you can have dessert apples, you can have whatever, you can have damsons, plums, cherries, pears. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you. It's probably worth mentioning that the, the EFS information sheets for the traditional orchard are they're all available on the website. So if anybody is interested in just uh, what EFS would require, um, by all means, you can go and have a look at it. Um, just one final question. Um, I think this is one uh, for Kieran. Uh, we have a few mature trees that are quite infected. Um, how far should we plant new trees away from them? I would imagine that I, I don't know what part of the country they're in or where they are, but I would imagine, yes, say they had an old orchard or small, smallish number of trees. It's not, I wouldn't be unduly worried because the disease pressure shouldn't be that high. It's not like a commercial orchards in County Armagh where they're all on top of one another. The disease pressure shouldn't be that high and I'd be happy enough. I'd be happy enough to, to plant them, um, you know, adjacent to them. I would be, it's, it's just not an issue. Okay, thank you. So that's that's all our questions. So just, just in conclusion, um, folks, I hope you find this event useful. Um, thank you for participating. As I said, it's great to see so many people um, have logged in tonight. Hopefully the information tonight will allow you to better manage your orchard um, and keep those traditional varieties of fruit trees healthy and productive. Um, just a reminder, once this uh, event's completed, please don't shut your screen down. Um, I'll finish the call um, and this, this should allow you to get a, a short survey where you can provide some feedback. So thanks again uh, for attending.